name is Karen Monster Peters, and I am originally from the Dominican Republic, and I lived for 20, 26 years in the Netherlands, and I'm now back in the Dominican Republic <laughs> because I wanted to experience myself in a very different way, going back to my roots, see what's here for me. Um, my mother and, well, my whole Dominican family still lives here. And my mother's ill, so um, it, it's easier for me to take care of her needs while I'm here. And um, I also wanted to experience um, the Dominican Republic as a more freedom-loving country than the very restrictive Netherlands. <laughs> and people don't realize how um, everybody, when they think of the Netherlands, they think it's like, oh, it's all very, very liberal and expansive and things like that, but it's actually very restrictive. Um, it, there's very normalized. Um, they take care of their own if you conform, and I'm not very conformist. <laughs> and I wanted to, uh, I have three children, and my, two, my, my oldest is 19, but my two youngest, I wanted to give them a very different experience of schooling, of life, and that's what we're doing here. So I've been here since August and uh, we started in school and now we're homeschooling with a tutor. <laughs> so it's, it's been a journey of creating our own experience here. And I really am enjoying it. Um, yes, it's interesting. My journey has been that um, when I started my studies in cultural anthropology, I love cultures, you know, I love people. Um, and I stopped that. I switched into orthopedagogy later on. It's like child psychology, as I said, but it's, it's really in depth. I mean, so we, I studied everything from, uh, the, you know, like learning disabilities, uh, to developmental disabilities, to sensory disabilities, to every type of disability. And then we, then, you know, like families, family systems, behavior. I mean, it's so broad. I mean, it's five years, five year long uh, study. Um, and in my time, you automatically also had your master's when you did that. And now it's been split into two parts so that we could be, so that the international world understands our system. And in my second year, I had my daughter in my first year of orthopedagogy, I was 20 years old. And then I, uh, so I started studying um, with a child, <laughs> which was interesting. And then um, in my second year of university, I had, we had a, a like a, it was like a guest speaker on giftedness. And I was like, you know, that moment you're like, oh, we have to be here for again. And she was telling all of a sudden, she was telling us all about giftedness, about the intensity, about you're always too much, everything is too intense. Everybody, you know, you're uh, going through life very differently. And I was like sitting there, and I was like, holy crap, this woman is talking about me. What is this, right? I was like, uh, uh, what? <laughs> so I was like. It totally my whole life all of a sudden made sense uh, like other achievements and um, I mean just my whole life so I ran to her uh, after that that uh, session and I was like what is this and can I study this and can I like specialize in this and she's like well oh, yeah we're actually the only university in the Netherlands that you could specialize in because our research center is right here it's at the university so I started right away like volunteering with them uh, just I mean even just putting data in the in the system for research I was just as long as I'm in I'm in right and I went on to special, I did all my, all my qualifications with them. I did all my uh, internships with them so that I could be one of the only specialists right off in the Netherlands um, in giftedness, gifted education, gifted development. And the interesting thing about giftedness is that not many parents, not, not many people would say about giftedness, oh my God, I'm so smart. I don't know what to do with it. Nobody says that, right? 
they just go, holy crap, everything is so intense. My child is so intense. I don't, we don't know what to, how to help him, or I don't know what to do with it. And, and because of the intensity, all these problems then come up. But the, it, so, so there's, not a, there's not a problem in being gifted. It's just all the intensity is so much. So that's where I realized that the high sensitivity, the intensity part of giftedness was the most, the part that I really liked and that was the really real challenge and where the most misdiagnosis arose in, uh, in, the, in the psychology world. So there were a lot of children who were just gifted. I mean, it's not a diagnosis. It's a, it's a part of your, your personality. It's a trait. And highly sensitive children the same way who were out there and had ADHD diagnosis, uh, autism diagnosis, all type of diagnosis that were actually not true. Because the thing is with these type of diagnosis, they're just checking off a list of symptoms. And yeah, it might look like it, but it's not. The, 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 the layer, the, the brain is actually doing something very different. So that's what we're, that was where I specialized. And I did that for many years. For 15 years, I was one of the leading specialists in the Netherlands in actually misdiagnosis, like trying to get back to the core. And I helped a lot of families in that. And then in my own process, um, through my life, um, I started doing energy healing work as well. For me first, and then realized that it was actually so fitting for the, for the highly sensitive and the gifted because this healing work that I do, it goes very deep into their system. And because of the intensity of the gifted and the highly sensitive, Everything is stored very deep in your system. So conventional healing work, conventional therapy does not reach those layers. And they just keep going into therapy for years and years without getting any results, um, which was my experience as well. So that's why when I started doing this work, I was like, holy crap, you know? <laughs> and, and all of a sudden I was running two practices. I was doing my psychology work and then I was doing my energy healing work but it was actually meeting more and more. And that's where I, I was like, okay. I, I was also thinking, people are not gonna come for me for this, right? I'm a psychologist. And I was like, no, they did. <laughs> so that's how my, it was like an evolving thing. It was, I never thought I was gonna do one, you know, it was, it was just kind of like going like, what works? What works? Like I'm writing a book right now about the, spiritual side of parenting right the how how parenting can be a, a, a tool for or an awareness uh for spiritual growth because there's just so much that that we practice through parenting uh, when we're doing it consciously that it's it's just i mean i don't need i don't need an ashram i'm a parent of three right that's all I need to, to evolve spiritually. Because it's like you said, to be heard, to stretch that muscle of just listening without fixing, that alone is huge. It's huge. Because it, even if it's not Asperger, that's something we all want and need and long for to just be heard and seen without somebody trying our way to fix us. That's why I think that these children that are coming forth more and more, right? It's Asperger's and autism, and they're just challenging us to, to see the beauty of their path without right away thinking that there's something wrong with it. Because that, that normal is right and they're wrong just not it it's not it they're beautiful they have some so much to teach us about the person that we want to be and about differences and how we can celebrate that 